All the talk this week should be about Big Ben and the Steelers taking on Tom Brady and the Patriots in the AFC Championship game, right? But instead, we're talking about this video that Antonio Brown posted from the Steelers locker room following the win over the Chiefs. When you get to that point in the journey, man, not a lot needs to be said. No. Uh, let's say very little moving forward. Let's, let's, let's start on preparation. We can find it on the goals a day and a half. They played yesterday. Our game got moved to the night. We're going to touch down at 4 o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. So be it. We'll be ready for that. Uh, but you ain't got to tell them they come from the Because some of us here you know, might not like the damn wolf kickers. The, the check line, right? Keep a low profile. Let's get ready to ball up this up again here in a few days and be right back at it. Let's go. Uh, hey, man, this is our story. Yeah. Way to keep a low profile. The Steelers are publicly sticking by Brown, but the incident even has Bill Belichick weighing in on his favorite subject, social media, a.k.a. Snapface. I'd appreciate it because, like I said, everybody in this league is a <laughs> my opinion. You have to be to play this sport. The coaches then become head coaches uh, by being nice guys. Well, as you know, I'm not on Snapface and all that, so I don't really get those. Um, but I'm really just worried about getting our team ready to go. I'm not really too worried about what they're what they put on instant chat or whatever it is. <laughs> oh, that never gets old. Instant chat and snap face. Ryan Clark now with us. Good to see you. Good to see you guys as well. Stephen A., is it wise for the Steelers to be supporting Antonio Brown here? Well, I think it is because what you don't want to do is make it bigger than what it is because you've got an AFC championship game to play in this weekend. Uh, I don't, you know, they're going to try to downplay it because living in the age that we're living in, if you react to it negatively, then it's a story that gains momentum and continues into the weekend. And then that makes it into a distraction when you've got a Super Bowl berth that you're vying for. So you don't want to do anything to risk it, to jeopardize or whatever. Don't tell me that Mike Tomlin is OK with it. Don't tell me that Mike Tomlin doesn't think much of this or whatever. Somewhere along the line, he looked at young brother Antonio Brown in the eye and said, you ever do something like that to me again, we're going to have a problem because you don't sit up there and take the man while he's speaking without him knowing. You got to know better than that. Forget the fact that it's just post game and it's in the locker room. That's bad enough. But also he wasn't aware that you were doing that and you didn't do it while you were talking. You did it while he was the talking. The juxtaposition of what Tomlin is saying on the one hand and what Antonio Brown is doing on the other, the exact opposite, as uh, Bart Simpson once said, the ironing is delicious. I mean, <laughs> Antonio, what are you doing? In terms of the way the team reacts to it, th what do you mean? Like, you can't, you only, there are no options here. There's yep. only one thing to do. Yep. You got to support him. And now all your players got to be t cursing out the league now. Oh, no, no, we think that about everybody. We right. think everybody's a jerk. Let's clean it up, right? This will be addressed in the offseason, I'm quite sure. But there's a time and a place. And what can you do right now except support you know, one of the best offensive players in the league who you're going to need. Yeah, I reached out to Ramon uh, about his comments because I was like, that's a great answer. And he was like, look, man, I'm just trying to dig this right now so we can move on. Same thing with Will Gay. Will Gay was like, I'm telling the boys to focus on what we have to do. He's like, I told him what we have to gain here in winning rings and also in making money. And he said, that's what you should be focused on is doing what's best to get us to the Super Bowl. And I think the team understands that. But it's exactly what you say, Stephen A., if you answer in a different way, if you in some way don't support Antonio Brown, now the story continues to roll. Now it's a snowball effect to where we have to talk about this after Tuesday when we should be preparing to play one of the best teams, not only this year, one of the best teams of the, the, the best team of this millennium. And so if you're the Pittsburgh Steelers, you want this behind you as fast as possible. I'm sure that Coach Tomlin has addressed it with Antonio. He will address it with the media today during this press conference, and then he will want to move on from this. And that's what the team has already tried to do. I must confess, I know D'Antonio Brown a little bit. I like him. I think that he's underpaid as a receiver. I think he's one of the top three elite receivers in the game of football. I want him on my team. But what you said yesterday resonated with me profoundly because you're not just a former football player. You played on this team. You won championships with this team. You know a lot of players in this team. So I take what you say very, very seriously. And what you said about Antonio Brown yesterday is you said some people are thinking about the team. And some people are thinking about themselves, meaning, you know, their Facebook, their branding and all of this other stuff. When you said that, what the light bulb that flashed in my head, Max, is that you didn't come across to somebody that was saying Antonio Brown made a mistake. 
you came across as 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 somebody who was saying that he may not have even cared. No, I, I, I need it's you. Not, it's not even the, may no. not have even cared. He okay. didn't care. He didn't care. No, he that, didn't. Well, that's where I'm going. Yeah, yeah. Because if that's the case, then we got a problem. Because then that means he's a cat that can't be trusted. Because if you don't care, but you're going to put your teammates and your organization in that kind of compromising position. Again, I'm thinking you just immature and you didn't care. Right. But what you're saying is that, oh, he's fully aware. And he didn't care. Well, what and that's I'm saying, a whole different thing. What I'm saying is he's fully aware of what he wants and what he has to gain from that. He understood like he's not. And I tried to put it in a way to 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 be clear. He's not maliciously. There is no okay. foul intent in right. saying I want to get Coach Tomlin saying these things. He's or, just not I, thinking about that. He's, he's thinking about not himself. thinking about it Can at I, all, which, you know is, which is worse to me that because my thought process would be at any time if we were in here and I was doing a video and Max or you said something that I thought might be kind of off book, I would cut it off. Right. Right. Even if I wasn't paying attention, if you thinking if about said your a teammates, thinking would, about a bigger right. thing. Yeah. So you, we, we hear Coach Tomlin in the back. He's so unconcerned about what's going on around him because he's so into what he's doing. And do you know, now listen, okay. I think Odell Beckham is the best receiver. But after ha what happened, the distraction, and then the way he dropped those passes in that game, I can't call him the best right now. Antonio Brown, Julio Jones, those three are so great that every little thing that happens starts to re shuffle the order right. right now after Odell's performance and then Antonio Brown with this if you had to list the receivers you want Julio Jones is number one right now before this happened maybe Antonio Brown is Julio like these guys need to be aware if they're so concerned about their brands right. what the perception is going to be point. well Good I think point. here here's the other point about Antonio and I'll say is that Antonio shows up though the yes. on the field mm -hmm. Antonio yeah. Brown yeah. is yeah. always there no question yep yeah. Brian thank you so much for being thank here you. let's appreciate your perspective coming up Hello, boys and girls. The lesson for today is there's no such thing as regular season Eli Manning versus playoff Eli Manning. He is simply inconsistent. Yes, he's won two Super Bowls, but those other playoff appearances knocked out the first round. He is the accident waiting to happen. He's led the league in turnovers since 2012. Stop lying to the kids, Max. Santa Claus ain't real. Neither is a tooth fairy. And there's no such thing as playoff Eli Manning. You know what it is. Someone Thousands won those two Super Bowls. <laughs> of people entered the first ever First Take Your Take contest, but there could only be two winners. One of our winners joins us now. She's a diehard Cowboys fan who was born and raised in Dallas, but has spent the last 13 years in New York City. I am so excited to welcome the beautiful, talented Crystal Stone to the desk. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much, Molly. Welcome, welcome. How are you? I'm all right, Stephen. And how are you doing? Uh, you know, I'm, I'm just. I, I, excuse me, Max. I want to interject. Uh, uh, oh, oh. You, you, you're a Cowboys fan, right? Yes. Are you okay? Oh, I'm fine. Yeah, and you? I'll be fine. With Dak Prescott leading the team, I'll be just fine. No, we'll see. We'll see if he's leading the team according uh, to coach. Uh, maybe uh, not. Uh, 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 according to coach, <laughs> maybe not. According to coach. All right, all right. She's she ready. Seems to I'm be just, in the perfect she, she, spot. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just seeing I'm the feeling. Yeah. She yeah. seems ready. Okay, yeah. okay. Go ahead. Live in New York now, ready to jettison the Cowboys for a team that sometimes wins the oh, Super Bowl. Oh, absolutely not. That's New what York he does. Football giant. That's oh, what he does. Oh, he flips the team. That's already fine. Bandwagon a bandwagon. No, I'm a diehard Cowboys fan, and that's where I'm going to stay. Thank you very much. All right, let's She's get into Crystal's favorite team, the Dallas Cowboys. Ready, people? Yes. So the number one question. For their team right now is what's next for Tony Romo. NFL.com's Ian Rappaport reported on Sunday that Denver would be his choice of a landing spot, but the Broncos are not inclined to trade for him at the moment. Jerry Jones just saying on his radio show he's not ready to talk Romo. Crystal, should Romo be with the team next season? I think Romo should be with the team next season. Just based on what you just said. The Broncos aren't inclined to trade him, and that's really his best option because it's a Super Bowl contending team ready. I think he should stay with the team because if you look at the Cowboys, what has plagued us for the last 10 years? When Romo gets hurt, the Cowboys lose. Good point. Now, in 2015, that was the best example. Three backup quarterbacks only managed to win one of those games. So if we have, now we have Dak Prescott, and he was a blessing to the team. Yes, we were lucky to get him. But if something were to drastically happen to Dak Prescott, heaven forbid he gets hurt, or I can't imagine this happening, but he, his play on the field declines, we need to have a reliable backup quarterback 
finally, and why not be Tony Romo? Now, you both have always said on this show that Tony Romo is an elite quarterback. He's one of the top 10 quarterbacks of the last decade. We can't be stuck with the likes of Mark Sanchez and Kellen Moore. We've seen what they've done with the team. Why don't we have the best insurance policy we could possibly have in Tony Romo yeah. and then see where we can go? I, I, I like that point so much when I made it like repeatedly <laughs> over the last several months. It's such a great point. And here's the reason that you need to t hold on to Romo. You do. You're right. You have to hold on to Romo. He's a great insurance policy. He can't stay upright for more than three or four games. But hopefully with your backup quarterback, that's all you need. And if it happens in the playoffs, maybe you can mess around and still win a Super Bowl even if your starter goes down. But the real reason you need to keep him and spend all that money is because he's so expensive and because everyone knows he's injury prone, you can't get anything for him. I've been trying to tell people this. Oh, we're going to get a first round pick and a foot. You ain't getting yeah, any of that gonna stuff. They're going to get something no, for him. Barely. They're going to get very, very little because whoever's taking that contract knows it's a huge amount of money for a player who is guaranteed to get hurt. I'll even tell you where the injury will occur. Somewhere in his back. <laughs> High, low, middle, whatever. The backbone's connected to the backbone. Way to go out on he will get hurt, and you will be stuck paying a lot of money for a guy who can't play. That's why he has virtually no trade value, not the way people think he does, and that's why he should remain on the Cowboys. How you doing, Chris? I'm good, Steve. Now, you've asked me that twice now. I'm just, I'm just checking. I'm just checking mm -hmm. because, um, you know, it's interesting that you bring that up and you talked about Tony Roma being great and piggybacking off of Max Kellerman's comments, you may not have noticed he loses all the time. But that's a <laughs> subject for another day. Illusional. I guess what I'm trying to say is this. Tony Romo, are you aware of the fact that as a Cowboy fan that Tony Romo has been your starting quarterback since 2006? Oh, uh, no, I had no idea. All right, two, since 2006. Uh, he's played in six playoff games. Do you know his playoff record? Because you implied that they lose when he gets hurt as opposed to them losing when he's actually on the field of play. Mm -hmm. Are you aware of the fact that in six playoff games, Tony Romo has a two and four record? Really? Yeah. Oh, wow. So in other words, he's got two playoff victories his entire career that's spanning 10 years. And yet you will sit here and say, keep him, even though you know as well as I do that your owner, Jerry Jones, is, I mean, the hype machine personified. You know as well as I do, Crystal, that this man is a distraction, that this man gets in the way, that this man should have fired himself as the GM and the president a long time ago and just be an owner cut to check and move the hell out the way. And because he loves himself some Tony Romo, did it ever occur to you that keeping Tony Romo around could be the kind of distraction that lends itself towards one accident after another, finding its way to bring this team down? Because I have proven yet again that what can go wrong with the Cowboys will. Okay. So you talk about Jerry Jones. As a diehard Cowboys fan, I've always told my friends here in New York, because they're like, oh, get rid of Jerry Jones, get rid of Tony Romo. There's two facts, now just one, that we always live with. Jerry Jones is the owner and general manager until he dies. We have to live with that. That is never going to change. Right. And now, Tony Romo used to be the starting quarterback, now we have that. Here's the thing, we, we're trying to get rid of Tony Romo, but we still need someone in the backup quarterback position. Like what I said before, who, what has plagued the Cowboys? We, when Tony Romo gets hurt, that's it. Can't win so, again. He can't win a game. So, and, and is it uh, tennis we're talking about? Or are we talking about football? football. Okay, because tennis is a one-person sport, right? There's one person on the side that he's responsible for everything that happens on that court. Right. Football is a team sport. Right. And you've said on this show just last week mm -hmm. that all of Tony Romo's faults are all the faults of the Cowboys, us not winning, us the two playoff victories, do not all fall on Tony Romo. Right. You've admitted this. Yeah. Stephen Jones said the same thing in 2014. Mm -hmm. He said the only thing that's missing from Tony Romo's career, his legacy, is a Super Bowl win. And that does not sit in Tony Romo's lap. That sits in our lap. That sits in our family's lap, Jerry Jones, and and they have to put the right people around him. He is admitted to that. Yeah. So it's not just T Tony Romo's fault. Very decent argument. I have no problem with what you're saying per se based on what you said. It's just more to it. Like for example, you are right that all of the losses don't fall on Tony Romo. But that would happen to be because there's been so much losing that it can't possibly fall on one person. Because if Tony Romo just lost the two and four and that was that, and that's the only time that the Dallas Cowboys are losing, that would be a difference, Crystal. But the fact of the matter is that the Dallas Cowboys have been losing for 21 years. Since 1995, they have two playoff victories in 21 years. So, of course, it's not all his fault since he's only been there the last 10. There's 11 years that preceded that where they were losing then, too. It's not all on Tony Romo. I give you that. But there is no doubt that he has a lot to do with the ineptitude Crystal, that has transpired during the postseason. Crystal, uh, um, Go ahead, contrary Max. to what you said, 
in the video leading to this segment. <laughs> there is, in fact, a playoff Eli. There isn't a playoff Romo, and that may be the problem. You do have to elevate in the playoffs. And Romo's an excellent quarterback, but I can't say that he's a guy where when the playoffs begin, you're saying, okay, they got Romo, and we all know under pressure, Romo becomes a better player. In fact, Romo was the guy who couldn't hold on to the snap and then tried to run it but in Matt, himself. to her point, it's better that it's not great from having a Mark Sanchez. Oh, clearly. And, and you need yes. a backup quarterback. And, and let's not forget. He's the best time. option. He's the best backup quarterback, essentially, Molly, in the NFL. That's may I say something? That's why you I say, may. May I say you something. You may. Thanks for asking. Even, so though, kind of. even though I had to get in there about the Romo, Chris, who did make some good offers. Yeah, and, as, wanted, and, and another thing, give another thing you're, you're saying that we, we've been losing. Actually, the Cowboys, for the past 12 years, are ranked sixth in regular season wins. And that's more than 26 other teams, really? including everyone else in the oh. NFC East. So, so don't just say we're losing. Just don't say we're losing. We so, so, haven't so, 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 have so, so, won a Super Bowl. We haven't won a Super Bowl in 20 years. We have not won a Super Bowl. Now we're talking about they're one of the six best regular season wins. Oh, my God. So we changed it, I guess. Say I that totally we're losing get it. and I talking totally about droughts, I totally we're not the only team you know having you a drought. Use, you oh, use, you're just yeah. like everybody else yeah. now. Uh, your now your team, boys. your team, your Steelers yes. had a 26 year drought. What were you doing then, Steelers? Excuse were you in the streets Excuse crying, me. tearing your <laughs> no, head off? You know what he did? Well, he claimed know. another team. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. He became a Packers. Know. You know what the Cowboys could use? Playoff Eli. Oh my oh, gosh, oh, no! Please, no! They can use Terry Bradshaw. No, okay. they we can don't even need Ben Roethlisberger. We don't even need to use all of Twitter followers <laughs> to weigh in here. Should Tony Romo stay with the Cowboys? Vote yes or no, and we'll reveal those results a little later in Crystal's second segment with us. Looking forward to that. Great job. Thank you.